Hey guys, uh, so just fed my fish some frozen baby brown shrimp like I was talking about a few videos ago. Uh, as you can see, even though it's not as big as adult brown shrimp, live or frozen or freeze dried, the freeze dried is not the best choice. As well as decapitated brown shrimp that aren't hatchable, do not get those because they're actually quite bad for your fish. Uh, so as you can see, they go crazy for it, no matter how big of it is, big it is, because they still feed on thousands, hundreds of thousands, uh, in each bite, basically. So overfeeding, kind of a problem, not that much with this. Uh, so they'll probably eat it all before I can some of the other ones. So uh, I'm gonna talk a little bit on. How I got my peacock gudgeon goby pair to breed, and how you can get your tetras to spawn, and most other fish that hail from South America and Asia. So, one, the most important thing is protein and live food. So, basically, you need lots of live food like right now I'm feeding them baby brine shrimp because they're gonna breed again in about two weeks three week, two and a half weeks max so uh, one is live foods lots of lots of live foods which means brine shrimp cyclops baby brine shrimp uh, what else blood worms uh, me chopped up or blended earthworms, you know, all that good stuff that fish love. Uh, Freeze-dried, not so good. I would recommend live or frozen because they're, they have more protein and stuff in them. Uh, so, the that's the first thing. Second thing is water changes, water changes, water changes, and more water changes. The only reason they spawned is because, one, I was feeding a lot of live food to try and help my uh, male cockatoidy gets some more protein in his diet and try and get him better, but he never ate for some reason. He never ate because he was, couldn't eat, and so he died. Anyway, he died from lack of food and lack of or er, poor health. But my every all, all the other fish were thinking, oh, it's live food, and then their bodies were making eggs and stuff that are, and the females were getting big and full of eggs and the males were getting fertile everybody was getting all hyped up and saying oh yes this tastes great uh so enough so the water changes basically one is bringing better water quality two is mimicking the natural natural rainfall of the rainy season in the amazon and in the Asian ponds and streams where the uh, gobies are from, and uh, uh, at least freshwater gobies, and uh, so they've so their natural instincts kick in. Even though they've been bred for gen thousands of generations in captivity, they still feel the it's time to breed when you do water changes, and that's probably never going to change anytime soon. The only fish that don't do that are most live bears, like guppies, mollies, these killifish, uh, I don't know, mosquito fish, all the other stuff. Uh, so those are the two things, and you need to have good hiding spots. For tetras, you need fine-haired or ground-covering plants and dance planting, like uh, a lot of kabomba and a whole bunch of dwarf er, Hair grass, dwarf hair grass, dwarf sag, jungle bell, stuff like that. They just love to spawn in that. Or spawning mops. Sometimes they spawn in that. I, I don't. I haven't really seen people breeding in that. Uh, for your cave spawners, the gobies like to breed in PVC piping, especially the peacocks. Uh, I guess this just feels more secure because it's a lot smaller, and there's usually only one at. You want to put it up against the glass so you can see if they lay eggs, so there's only one opening. Uh, uh, the other cave spawners, like larger cave spawners, like uh, 
the larger cichlids, eh, uh, the dwarf cichlids and larger cichlids that like to do cave spawners are gonna, probably going to need either a gigantic piece of PVC, which you probably don't want to buy, or some flower pots, like right back there. I'm trying to zoom in. That flower pot, half buried, or just cut it if you have something that can cut ceramics. I don't right now. I, I don't have anything that can cut that, so I just half bury it. Or the other option is to flip it so the the only their whole entire or flip it upside down so nothing there's no openings and then cut a little notch in the bottom big enough for just one of the fish to get in. So that's good for pistos and uh, a few other cave spawners or like uh, West African dwarf cichlids. So those are. Four, five, something like that. Whatever. Uh, the things that are necessary to breed. Some other things is are uh, the only fish that can really actually breed successfully in the community aquarium are cave spawners. Like I just like you've seen, the good and gobies bred right over there, and it's pretty fish full filled tank. So. Cockatoides or pistos, the easier ones might breed in the community. Uh, so, that's pretty much it. Uh, you might want to get them another tank if you're really trying to raise as much fry as you can without anyone eating the eggs. If they're uh, fish like cichlids or gobies, they will defend their eggs pretty well. Oh, betas uh, can also pretty much breed successfully in the community aquarium. It's just that you're going to have to take out the fry once they are free swimming because then the male finds them as a threat and everyone else finds them as a snack. So, that's it.